It is day four after the elections. We are live to you from The Rock in Tswane, the res Results Operations Center. Good afternoon. My name is still Adrian Basson. Uh, we are tired, we are fatigued, we are sweaty, and we want to go home. But it's been four exciting days here at The Rock in Pretoria. I am joined for the last time in our ballot box conversations on News24 by Davi Schools, our News24 elections analyst who hasn't slept much over the past few days, and of course, Professor Tenjiko Maluleke from the University of Pretoria, News24's in-house analyst for this election. Welcome, gentlemen. Uh, are you looking forward to getting a bit of rest and sleep? Shower would be good. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been a few exciting days, Professor Maluleke. We've seen the ground shift in local politics in South Africa. Um, we've seen some big things happening with the national uh, 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 numbers projected. Of course, the national numbers not so important in our municipal, um, uh, how they work, but, but still very significant. What for you, were you sitting here today on Thursday, looking back over the past three days, Prof. Maluleke, what has been the, the top three stories, if I can limit you to three, or t three top three, three themes mm. out of this election for us as a country? Well, l let me start by disagreeing with you that the, the, the national number doesn't matter in local elections. I think it matters because the reason the ANC has gone below 50% is because they have performed consistently badly in, in, in a large enough number of local municipalities to get to that number. So we can't dismiss it because it's not as if you have... Uh, it's not a national election. You get to that number by losing municipalities. So I'll, I'll disagree with that. But what are the three most important things? Um, I think for me, the voter turnout is obviously um, the big issue uh, for this election. Let's think about it. 27 million and maybe even 28 million South Africans have not voted, either because they didn't bother to register or they didn't bother to turn out. That's a huge number. Now, the question is, is there a party, is there a person who's going to wake up that giant, that 28 million South Africans, and make them come to vote next time around? That, that is the, the, the big challenge. The second thing uh, for me is that not only did people turn out in low numbers, but those who did turn up, they seem to be sending several messages to the political parties. One of them is that their trust level is very low of political parties. I wouldn't go so far as to call it an insurrection of the electorate, as some people have suggested. But I think we are getting close to that. It's a, it's a very powerful rebuke from the electorate to the political parties. That for me is the second the second. The third is that I wonder whether all of our current top five political parties are not the same, really. Whether they are different enough in, you know, for the electorate to, to, to pick and choose between them. I have a sense that they are pretty much the same. They are all to the right. They are all elitist. Uh, and they have all failed together over the past five years to deliver service delivery. Professor, if I, can, if I can elaborate on this issue of, of uh, turnout, of low voter turnout. So one of the sentiments we heard loud and clear when we did our pre-election coverage in, in South Africa, metro and urban uh, and rural, was people saying we're not going to vote because it doesn't help. It doesn't matter to vote because nothing changes for me in my life. My services are still poor. My load shedding is still poor. How do you? How does a political a political party or a politician, whether it's a big ANC, DA, EFF, or a small local party, how do you change that sentiment? How do you make someone who thinks like that come out next time and vote? Well, you, you change it by by getting things uh, done, as the DA was promising. Except that the DA didn't also always get things done. But that's really how you change it. So they had their finger on the pulse when they suggested the idea of getting things done. South Africans are tired of slogans, it seems to me. The electorate is tired of slogans. They are tired of philosophies. 
they are tired of songs. They've sung enough under Jacob Zuma. Um, they really just want water. They want electricity. They want roads. They want houses. They want schools. So I don't think it's time to promise anymore. People just want a political party that will demonstrate um, year one, this is what we have got done. Year two, this is what we have got done. And I don't hear enough of that in the current discussions around coalitions. It sounds to me that once again it's a kind of horse trading between this party and that party. Give me this, I give you that. But the electorate is almost already forgotten. And if, if this continues like this, then 2024 will be the same. And probably the turnout will be as low. Isn't it almost then ironic that I, that that we're sitting with the situation in our big metros at least where we're going to have to stitch together these complicated coalitions which may if we look at the past five years not be the best uh, governance tools if I can call it that mechanisms look at Nelson Mandela Bay they're gonna have to be Davi about six seven eight if not nine parties that makes up a governing coalition isn't that gonna have the ironically an adverse effect on service delivery for these people who desperately wanted to give their votes to someone else. Yeah, look, I hope that we have learned some lessons from the past five years. I mean, the coalition governments have been disastrous uh, in the main. There are a few that held up um, for the five years, but very, very few and in, in places that are, that are small. So my hope is that we'll have learned our lessons, but to, to look at the issue you are raising from a different perspective. Ought coalition government arrangements to be difficult, really, if all the parties had the interest of the communities and the municipality uh, at heart? If, if we are coming together to form a government for a particular municipality and all that matters to us is that service is delivered to, that, uh, to the people of that municipality, it ought not to be very complicated. What makes it complicated is what's in it for us. That's really the question behind every political party when they think about COVID. What's in it for me? That mentality is not going to bring back the, 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 the electorate, the, the, the voters who have not uh, come around this time. Davi, I've got lots of questions for you on numbers, but tell me first your th top three themes or stories from this election result. Number one, I agree with the prof, the fact that the ANC is under 50, that is enormous. It's not, um, as you've said, relevant for who governs the country and so on, but you know, it's, an, it's a really critical psychological point we've reached. Um, and I think for a lot of voters, the genie is out of the bottle a little bit now, um, in terms of willingness to vote for a party that's not the ANC, thinking openly about you know, alternatives. Um, and so, so I think that's, that's definitely number one. For me, the emergence of Action SA is number two. Um, I, I think, you know, there, there just clearly is an enormous amount of frustration in the electorate. Um, and people are, are looking for solutions. Um, either it's going to come from a party that is currently in government, the ANC. Maybe they can improve economic and governance outcomes and that will make people happy and it will help the ANC. Or they can't, and if you know, of all the opposition parties, you know, their strategic objective is to convince people that they have a real, tangible, credible, believable offer that is going to make things better for them, and not philosophical. I think, as the prophet said, not a slogan. Stuff that's real, that's actually going to make sure the water is on, the electricity is on, houses get built, the economy is growing, jobs are created, it's safer on the streets, etc. And in that picture, all of the opposition parties have a, a, an offer potentially. But I think Action SA is, is one party that has the potential, they're not there yet, don't get me wrong, but has the potential, if they manage the next six months, 12 months right, to potentially have an explosive impact in 2024 if they get that right. They have a way to go though, um, but the, 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 just they've got a good start now. Um, and then look, I think my third story is, it's very specific, there's a lot of big things, but just the outcome in Etiquini is just extraordinary. <laughs> I mean, for the ANC to be 42% in Interquini, you know, it's come down to 42 now. That's an explosive result. It's going to have, you know, I, the one thing I haven't fully contemplated yet, and I think we don't fully understand it, is just the sort of knock-on effect it's going to have in internal ANC politics, in 
you know, KZN politics, um, you know, in the national discussion around the NC. So I think that that's a really important result. How that metro gets governed now is going to be really important. Uh, so yeah, that's my top three. I want us to talk about Itiquini, but first, just on X Action SA. Yes. Really, the only party that has reason to celebrate tonight. I know there's a gala dinner or something happening downstairs, but I mean really literally the only party that can really celebrate exactly you know th there's a case to be made that everyone lost this election right like the ANC clearly lost the, like horrible election for the ANC the DA will argue and argue but the point is they're down five points on the last local government election if you look under the, the the numbers that are inflated by turnout they actually did really poorly at the demographic level and I'll write more about that in the article that we're publishing tomorrow. I just saw, sorry, before I came in, I just saw a stat that the DA has lost around uh, three to 400 seats countrywide. Exactly. So and those are, those are people without jobs now. There's people without jobs, but it's also the DA's human resources. The army on the ground for any political party is primarily the councillors. The army is smaller now for the DA. Um, and it has knock-on effects. But, but anyway, as I was saying, the DA, there's real reason to believe had an, an awful election. I really do believe so. Um, the EFF stagnated, so not a great election for them. Um, I think maybe the, the, the IFP could say that an okay election, yes. right? Um, pretty good election, potentially. Yeah, in case in case it in. The Patriotic Alliance can say that a pretty good election, but it's quite small. And Kenny Kunene will put up a party for them. Yeah, it, absolutely. <laughs> there may be sushi at this party as well. Um, but but the, but I think that the the largest party that can that has a good story to tell about this election is Action SA. I will caution though, um, they had. A, a very good outcome in Johannesburg, yes. but but also not a truly extraordinarily mind-blowingly fantastic outcome because they're 16%. It, it, they're not going to be, the, you know, Herman's not going to be the mayor, or if he is, it's going to be in a really complicated wow, situation. I'm hearing things. Wow. <laughs> Can I just say one more thing? But it's really concentrated in Johannesburg, and then a little bit in the rest of Gauteng, but not so much in KZN. So they have a ton of work to do to build a national footprint. Um, as, as it's been, you know, they've got 2% in Etiquini. Prof, accepting that Action is has got a ton of work to do in Darby's words, mm -hmm. is it, it's truly exceptional, I think, for a party that comes from zero, zero, zero support, uh, new slogan, new people, new offices to have to put together this whole thing and go into the city of gold, Johannesburg, and take 16%. I mean, it's extraordinary. I think it is extraordinary, except that it has been done before by the EFF in, in, when the EFF came around uh, for the first time. I think they, uh, uh, their national score was, uh, was, was not that high, no, no. but uh, it, 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 was, it was better spread across the country than, than Action SA. So yeah, Action SA is an amazing kid, new kid on the block. I'm not sure that... Uh, Action SA is a different kind of a political party from, say, the DA or the ANC in terms of their their makeup and their and their and their ideology. Um, uh, I'm not saying the ideologies are exactly the same, but the shape of their ideology. So, my fear for Action SA is uh, whether there will be enough fuel in the tank. For, for them to stick around for a long time. They, they have very good characteristics. They've got very good crossover appeal. Uh, we spoke about the other day in the sense that they pick up voters from the townships and from the suburbs. Yes. Uh, those are good things, but in the end, they are just another political party, another elitist. They could easily become another elitist political party. And uh, very soon they will suffer from the same symptoms of um, of disease that we have seen with the, the DA and, and the ANC. That, that's my fear. I don't see them posing a totally, dramatically different political proposition. The, 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 the highlight for me from, from what I've seen from the uh, Action SA's results, or the, the most significant, I think, achievement, and tell me, please tell me if you agree, was the ability to break through in Soweto. Because yeah. for the first time, I looked at with Davi earlier at townships across the country, but Soweto is the one township where there was lower turnout, but there's a segment of about, call it 20 to 30 percent of ANC voters in certain certain VDs that literally took the ANC cross and gave it to another party for the first time. It's amazing. Look, I think there is a, a level of trust that people have on him and Mashaba, yeah. the man. Yeah. Um, which is inexplicable 
uh, but it is there because he was the mayor of Johannesburg and he has made the right noises about caring for our people, about uh, foreigners in the country, about how the ANC is not treating them well. So he seems to have connected uh, with, with, with the people emotionally at some level. Whether it will be deep enough to last long enough is, is something we'll have to, to, to wait and see. Can I just, about the action essay thing, they're going to have to transition now to create a really distinctive, concrete offer that is relevant at the national level, right? So they've not been particularly ideological in this election. It was all about roads, bottles, water, yes, foreigners, but, you know, primarily it, it was fueled by getting basic, thing, basic things done, rejuvenating the inner city, etc. But now the question is, you're going to a national government election in 2024, what is your national blueprint for the country and I agree with the Prof there's a real risk that this could be another sort of somewhere in the kind of midst of the DA and ANC ideology party right but but there is also I see a, a kind of small window of opportunity to build something distinctive um, that it, it's going to be a little bit controversial and challenging I think because it's it's definitely populist in nature in some ways. It's, it's going to be focused on hard immigration controls. Um, it's going to be focused on uh, really hard crackdown on law and order topics. Um, you know, any question about the ANC, Adam and Mishaba usually say something like, they must protect to jail, right? That's a different answer than saying, chapter nine institutions must yeah. investigate. There's, there's, there's a populist way that I think is appealing to go about the same topics of accountability and law and order, but to do it in a hard, direct, populist way that I think appeals to South Africans. Donald Trump. Yeah, a, 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 a South African adjusted Trump in some ways, <laughs> yes, on some issues, but then the critical question is going to be, so law and order is relatively easy. Um, from an electoral perspective, probably uh, immigration and, and issues of illegal foreigners um, and crime surrounding that is going to be easy for them electorally. What is going to be challenging and what they need to hash out is redistributive economic policy. What exactly does Action, action SA offer? Um, when the ANC says we will give you affirmative action, we will give you black economic empowerment and we will give you a land redistribution plan that looks like this, what is Action SA's offer instead of that? Because in, in South Africa, the fundamental question in a national election is who is best positioned to continue the transformation of South Africa's economy, yes, to grow it, but also to create a fairer society and undo the damage of apartheid. And the, the ANC has just always had the most credible answer. The EFF has radical answers to that question, but I don't think a lot of people believe what the EFF say about it. But the Action SA needs to grapple with that question and they need to come up with a good answer to that question, if they do. And it needs to be slightly different but, uh, from the ANC, but I think it needs to be an explicit offer in racial terms, I believe. Th there's potential. There's Can I just potential. challenge you slightly on that, Dobby? Because yeah. we did research recently, a poll before this election, uh, that Victory researched it for us. And there are South Africans about the main issues that yeah. bothers them, and specifically zoning in on corruption and racism, yeah. which are two of the issues that are in the news every yeah. day. And the results were telling. Because across the board, even from their own supporters, the yes. ANC is perceived as corrupt. Yes. That is the word closest identified with the ANC, probably in the voters' minds at this moment. The DA is perceived by a, a, a large number of black participants in our poll as racist. Yes. That is the word that comes up for them. If you agree with it or not, that doesn't matter. That is a perception in a poll that came out. Wasn't Mashal, but didn't he do something as simple as positioning him as not corrupt and not racist. It works in a local because government then, election. Professor, <laughs> he does distinguish himself from the DA, perceived by many South Africans as racist, and the ANC perceived as utterly corrupt to the core by saying, I'm not corrupt, I'm not racist, and I can't govern. Yeah, but you know, the, the conversations in South Africa about racism and uh, corruption have become quite debilitating because what happens is that people are almost sound as if they're saying well I may be corrupt but I'm not racist well I may be racist but I'm not corrupt as if the two things yeah. 
are uh, are interchangeable. You you get that 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 uh, that kind of contrast a lot nowadays. I mean, recently in this controversial interview um, of uh, Gareth Cliff. Yes, you you got that contrast between the two. So it's not either racism or or, or corruption. Both of them are bad, and that's the message that Mashaba needs to find a way of building into his profile, where he is, and I agree with you, he is seen to be not racist and not corrupt. Because at the moment, that is, you know, what the DA looks like this, the ANC looks like this, what do you look like? I think that's what the elect electorate is, is, is looking at. Prof, I just would like to hear your view, and then we have to move on from Action SA because I didn't win the national election <laughs> yet. But what is your view on Darby's comments around Action SA now having to formulate an economic policy and tells particularly black South Africans what they can offer for them in terms of employment, equity, BE, and land redistribution? I couldn't agree more. Maybe they've got, they will come at it from a totally different perspective. Yeah. That's fine. But they can't avoid those issues. Just like they can't avoid the issue of racism, yes. they can't av avoid the issue of corruption, they can't avoid the, the, the issue of, um, of lack of, of, of uh, service delivery. So they will have to say something. Until now, Mashaba has survived by pretending not to be a politician. Yes. So I'm not a politician, I'm just a fixer. Vote for me, I'll fix things up. Yes. Make things great again. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that, that can work for some time, but it doesn't work forever. Ah. So sooner or later, he will have to be a politician yes. and show us what his politics are like. Yes. We don't know them yet. Just take, my, take me into that ideal party that you're talking about the whole time. You're talking about some kind of new party that's not the same as all the others we have. What, what kind of thing are you, are you imagining? Or what do you think we don't currently have on the menu? Well, for one thing, we don't really have a leftist party among the current parties. I mean, the EFF is not a leftist party. Uh, I saw that one person has, has resigned from the Communist Party, accusing it of not being a real Communist Party, a very prominent uh, member of the Communist Party. Uh, the ANC is not a leftist party. The DA is not a leftist party. So all these parties are on the right from center, and they are battling that space um, and there's only so much you can do in that space uh, it seems to me and that's why we are going into fragmented politics and there's no way back yeah. as long as all of them are fighting in that space so and I'm not saying someone must go and create a leftist party it's not my job to do that but you've got 27 million South Africans who's gonna who's gonna wake them up these parties are not going to be able to, not even Action SA in my view, because um, uh, Action SA can just do more of the same of what the DA is doing, you know, I'll do it better. Like the DA has begun to tell people I'll do better than the ANC, but the trajectory is the same. So I think we need a party from the left. We also need a party that is more connected to the grassroots. And that's the story of the independence and the community organizations. There, there is a disconnect uh, between the political parties and the grassroots, yes. all of them. So that's what we need. In the next segment, when I'm joined by our political editor, Kunita Hunter, and our assistant editor, Peter Detoy, we will talk about the rise of the super locals in this election. Davi, uh, schools, before I let you go for a final time, mm -hmm. Etiquini, Etiquini, yes. what is the government likely to look there? Is there anything else than a ANC, EFF, coalition? No. Of course uh, there is. What are the numbers again? ANCDA. Uh, is, yes, fair. That's a fair observation. Just so give the, us the numbers So the numbers, yeah. the numbers for Etiquini, for the viewers and everyone, is, so where it's settled now, right? It's 42% for the ANC. 42. Wow. It's extraordinary. Let's just, 42 is minus 14, right? Um, the DA on 26, flat. EFF on 11, that's plus 7. That's good. Um, the, the Action SA on two, right? And the IFP seven, so plus three roughly. So, you know, the easy avenue is ANC plus EFF. That, yeah, that's, th that, that's 53, that's it. That's the easy avenue, it, easy, you know. And we heard Julius Malema saying just a, a while ago, 
he does not want positions. He wants agreement on uh, land, which is a national issue, but yeah. obviously has local uh, impact, but it's a national issue. Yeah. Um, water, sanitation, toilets in every house, and looking after the disabled and the old. Yeah, well, look, and by the way, the exact same math can be done for Ekuruleni. So Ekuruleni and Etiquini are the two that sort of go together mm -hmm. because their ANC plus EFF kind of is, is yes. fifth, in the low 50s, right? Yes. Uh, and really the only viable option um, yes. in both of those. Can the others gang, gang up against the ANC? So uh, if the EFF agrees, yes. But the, but, but the question is that the DA refuses to work with the EFF. So, so if you go DA, that's 26, plus IFP, it's 33, plus Action SA is 35, plus Small Rats and Mice, 38. Uh, then, you, then you sit with 38 with the EFF. They need the EFF. On it. They can't do it without the EFF. And the DA said it won't work with the EFF. Um, so, Dovi, realistically, um, yeah, and I know this is going to play out, but it's nice to, to play crystal ball games. But realistically, we're looking at Itiquini at the ANC the EF coalition, in Ekruleni at the ANC EFF government, in Johannesburg a DA Action SA plus almost everyone else government, in Tswane a DA EFF, FF plus, and a few others government, and Nelson Mandela Bay. Uh, Throw some names Team in a hat. parties plus either the DA or the, or the ANC. Yeah, exactly. Look, uh, the only thing that can blow up this, all of the assumptions is a big national agreement between the ANC and the DA, right? I saw a story about Gwede Mantashe and Helen Zilla having conversations. Um, I don't know what's going on. Um, having and, tea? And I, I project elections that do not reach politicians' minds. <laughs> um, so, so, so let's see. Uh, that's the only thing that could fundamentally change this discussion, if that happens. Professor, last question to you before I let you go to get a bit of a rest. Do you realistically think an ANC DA national coalition is a possibility? I doubt very much, but I, I think it may work in some places yeah. out of necessity. Uh, but I don't think that you, you, you are going to have a blanket agreement in the, in the way that um, Davi was speaking now. I think it will have to be very targeted. It may work here and there, but not elsewhere, kind of. It's, it's not impossible. I mean, everyone is, is saying, I'm not going to work with so-and-so, I'm not going to work <laughs> with so-and-so. But that's posture. Yeah. It's really part of the, yes. the negotiation process. It, it, it doesn't amount to much. The, when, when reality hits, they will work together, if necessary. If, if, if only for their own sakes, not so much for the yeah, for sakes of the community. Politics at the end of the day is a game of survival. Thank you very much, Davi Scholes. It was absolute pleasure and privilege having you with us again. Looking forward to seeing you here in three years' time. Professor Maluleke, thank you so much for coming to us. Stay tuned. We are coming back to you with our last panel of this election after this small break where we go uh, and look back at some of the on-the-road visuals that our News24 team got uh, from South Africans on the road to this election. We are not feeling all right with this rubbish. Seriously, seriously, it's bad. Because sometimes the people throw the cats, dead dogs, the kimbis, old age uh, 
refusal, you see the Kimbis, all, all of that stuff. We, every, every election, Sifumana is Tembi, so more is Tembi, so we're going to do this, we're going to do this. After the, the, the election, nothing happened. You see, nothing happened. But what about the post of Adira, 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 Probleem bij mij is die gruwel dat ons jong mensen, onze die werkie, dat is werkskipping wat geskip wordt, maar dan is dat zekere van die mensen wat ik verkies word om te gaan werken of ze nou gestemd het vallen of niet gestemd het, maar dat is altijd of het nou een familielid is. Ze moet altijd net een familielid is, want als je nou mooi kijkt bij ons, en ze kijken in die plakkerskamp, is meer jong mensen bij ons waar die rond zit. En die andere gerie wat mij geeft is dat ons het die water gerie wil nie. Ons toilets, as toilets, maar hulle maak jou toilets koon. Ons is vooral mensen hier en ons het kinders. So daar is een kiem, hulle weet van COVID-19, We are back at the rock for the last time. For the last time, guys, I almost feel a bit sad. And I'm joined in our studio here in Tuane by Quinita Hunter, our political editor, and Peter Dutue, our assistant editor for In Depth News. Colleagues, how are you feeling? Are you excited that we're almost done? I am. I'm very excited. I am also a, a little bit nervous of what this now brings for us. <laughs> <laughs> Your work might be done today, the but our work starts. <laughs> Peter, the big story starts now, the coalitions. It does, and it, 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 it's, there's a, there's a build-up to 2024. We're already talking about what might happen in a, uh, during the next general election. This will have a strong bearing on what our parties act for the next couple of years, what they do and what they don't do, how voters perceive them, um, how voters' minds can be changed. Um, and 2024 uh, is going to be a rollicking election. Konita, maybe just before we get into your top three themes or stories from this election, maybe just fill us in on the breaking news of the past hour or so where Julius Malema, the leader of the EFF, had his first public appearance yes. after the uh, government elections. Just in a nutshell, what was, his, what was his vibe and what did he tell us? Okay, a, a lot less, uh, uh, you know, not as bombastic yes. as, as he usually is, <laughs> uh, um, a lot more mellow. Um, and I think that uh, he, he raised some interesting points. The first is that he says that you, you, know, you, you can't compare them with the, with the ANC because people will still vote for the ANC. It's only been eight years. Again, a little bit of um, uh, a dial down from what he usually is that you know, will take over and that kind of uh, language. The second thing is, um, you know, he was commenting on the uh, assertion by the Democratic Alliance and by the um, Freedom Front Plus uh, that they will not go into a coalition with the EFF. He says that is very, very uh, racist. He also talked about the IFP. They're willing to go into coalitions there. I think he was pushed a little bit on um, who must take consequences. And I think that he's maintaining the line that they didn't perform badly um, and that they're showing steady growth. And we know that's not true. I mean, they stayed very neutral. The obvious causes analysis is that they are, have stayed neutral. That's, that's the best word. They gained some here and there, but also lost in places like Rustenburg. In places like Polokwane were very shocking mm. to me. Mafeking, these are EFF strongholds. I will not be surprised if you're going to see a leadership shakeup in the EFF as a result of poor performance. Another very interesting thing, Peter, you'll never believe this, he <laughs> said that they are going to deduct salaries of councillors to pay back election debt. So for the next three months, if you're an EFF councillor, you're not going to get your full salary. So <laughs> as the bank statements. Uh, Peter, four days of action, lots happening, yes. plate shifting, top three themes or stories for you. 
Definitely the ANC uh, losing support in uh, every single metropolitan municipality, uh, losing support uh, in, all nine metro uh, in all nine municipalities in Gauteng, in fact going under 50 in all of them and deeply under 50. Etiquini was a big one for me I think, Etiquini uh, is an ANC stronghold, they usually scored much more than 60% there, they're now on 42%, that's, a, that's an enormous shift in our political, uh, in the political terrain. Um, and then the low voter turnout, the message that that messages that that sent. Does that mean that the voters and the electorate have lost faith in the system? Uh, does it mean that they've lost faith in the parties? Uh, does it mean that they don't want two dominant parties? There are so many themes that have come out of that. And um, look, it's something to be concerned about because you want as many people in the country to take part in an election as possible. So ANC's losses, loss in support generally, ANC's loss of support in metros, uh, and then the turnout, the three big stories for me. Peter, the ANC has dipped under their national support. So literally, yes, every single vote brought out in this election, they dropped under 50 for the first time ever. The national scoreboard is now on 45.6%. So they're yeah. going to end, let's call it 46%. And this on the watch of one Cyril Ramaphosa. Is this an indictment on Ramaphosa? Does this have an impact on his presidency that has until now been relatively positive? It will undoubtedly have an impact on his leadership of the ANC. The ANC's default position when they are under pressure, Juanita and you know this very well, um, is to engage in backbiting, in knifing each other, in jostling for leadership positions. We're a year away from the ANC's leadership uh, uh, national conference where they will elect new leadership next year. Ramaphosa will definitely come under pressure from his political enemies in the RET faction who have also been weakened. We have to also acknowledge that it's not only the ANC as a party that have, has been weakened, but you know the factions inside of the party as well. Um, the opportunities for 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 patronage is now so much uh, less than it was barely a week ago. So Ramaphosa will certainly come under pressure. The, sim the symbolic nature of going under 50 cannot be understated. I think we of course know you cannot really compare municipal with a general election. Um, this has no bearing on a national government. But the ANC, the African National Congress, you know, governing this country with, with large majorities at almost every level since 1994, losing this le these levels of support um, in real terms, that's, that's very concerning for them. Kunito, the ANC's election message, uh, I guess, uh, written by Ramaphosa and Lodge was apologies, yeah. sorry, we've messed up at local we'll government level. What is, what's his supporters telling you? Is this like, yes, we knew we were going to do badly, we anticipated that, we, yes. we prepared the ground. And what are you hearing from his opponents in the ANC? Are they going to use this result to to take out the knives. They can't, because if you look at the performance in KwaZulu-Natal, for example, <laughs> that's their own doing. Mm. And so I don't think they, they anyone anyone has the leverage to take out the knives. I see this election result a little bit differently. I see it as an opportunity for Ramaphosa to just bulldoze reforms in a way that, that he doesn't mm. have to um, take any uh, uh, prisoners. He can just literally, um, you know, push reforms like like getting a system to govern coalitions that's something that can be done in parliament he can talk about uh, auditing um, skill sets in in councils and who you know who, who, what are your qualifications what do you have in terms of dysfunctional municipalities working on new systems work, you know being creative about local government because now you I mean you've already the worst has happened right mm. so 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 now what you can do is just spearhead reforms um, uh, because the, the alternative of doing the same thing is, is more difficult. Losing national government in 2024. Yeah. Peter, before I come to you, Kunitsa, they are already uh, changing things, right, with the interviewing process yes. for mayors. Yes. So they did put together a panel, but su not surprisingly, I suppose, a lot of um, the people that are on the panel are people who have been implicated in state uh. capture. However, um, the plan with this uh, process is that they are not going to just automatically push people who are number one on the list to be the mayor. So it doesn't mean if you are just popular among people, you know, in the NC, yes. uh, that you, you can buy popularity. I suppose <laughs> any political party. So, so this time around, they want to look at, they want to scrutinize, scrutinize qualifications. They want to look at track record. It's going to be interesting. Also, what's 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 even more fascinating is they have to put their best foot forward with that little uh, municipalities that they that they now uh, control. They have to make sure that um, the best, most suitable candidate is actually mayor, because they cannot have 
a repeat of history. Because this is about service delivery. Local government is literally about roads, bottles, water, electricity. But do you want it to come in on the ANC? Uh, Kurita makes a fantastic point. This is a brilliant opportunity for Sir Ramaphosa um, to push through some, some, some far-reaching reforms. But that presupposes, of course, a, a bold president, which I, I'd argue we haven't yet seen. Okay. And there has been a couple of turning points where you could argue this is an opportunity. And, and listening to Jesse Duarte yesterday at that press conference, she was saying, we've heard the message from the electorate loud and clear. And I wanted to retort, did you miss the message in 2016 when you lost three metros, when you lost Nelson Mandela Bay, Johannesburg and Twane? Um, you know, one, one of the most remarkable stories, and we spoke about our top three, I think we can name 30 big stories, was the losses that the ANC suffered in Soweto. Um, and if you want to talk about uh, the heartland of the ANC, I mean, Soweto, where Nelson Mandela lived, where the 76 riots occurred, or the 76 uh, uh, protests occurred, where uh, half half uh, the, of the struggle heroes come from, you know, rejected the ANC in, in their droves. Um, so, so Ramaphosa, you know, it, it would be it would be out of character, I think, for him to be as bold as as he can be. But I agree with Juanita; it's a fantastic opportunity if he has the power of his conviction. Well, it is life or death for him, uh, Juanita. What's yeah. your other top stories of the election? I think the rise of the super local parties is the very, very big uh, story for me. Um, you know, uh, uh, I think you accuse me of having an obsession with Malutia <laughs> Popo because I think that that tells the story. It's a microcosm of the hinterland of South Africa, right? Let, let's just tell the story of Maluti Apofong right. again. Tell, tell our reviewers where is it, what towns. Okay, so Maluti Apofong is Harrisman, Kwakwa uh, and surrounding areas. Yes. Putati Java as well. Yes, that which is which is sort of free state and then, you know, closer to, to KwaZulu Natal. That municipality um, was where uh, Ace Mahashule and his allies found a lot of um, support and, and it was uh, a place for looting. It was so bad that ANC councillors in the area blew the lid on corruption, but Ace Mahashule then kicked them out of the party and then later promoted the mayor that they were trying to expose as the chief whip in the, in the, um, in the Free State Legislature. What has happened since is the municipality is completely dysfunctional. When I mean completely dysfunctional, <laughs> AB, I don't know how to put it in words. Water cuts, days on end. Power outages, days on end. Sewage collection, the sewage works, not, you know, refuse collection, a pipe dream. Those are what people experience in the suburbs, in the townships, in the informal settlements all across. What has happened since? The municipality gets placed under administration. It's so bad that the computers and stuff of the municipality have to be repossessed to pay off debt. Goodness gracious. It is terrible. Those councillors that were kicked off the ANC then go and form a very localised party. It's not only them, they got ratepayers movements, they got other activists to join them as MAP-16. And they call it MAP-16? Yes. Because they were 16 who, who were, were kicked, kicked out, out by the ANC for blowing the whistle on corrupts, yes. corruption. And what has happened since is that they went and they just sort of campaigned very systematically. They also had the advantage of knowing the ANC. So when you know your opponent, you better at it. Cyril Ramaphosa has been there five times in this campaign. He would go one week, the next week David Mabuza would go. Ramaphosa would go, David Mabuza would go. And they have lost almost 30%. Not like, it, like I've not seen that type of, of, of shift before. From in the 60s to in the to 30s. 30s? Yes. And MAP-16 now has 20 seats. They don't, they're the second biggest party. They don't have an outright majority, but there's a lot of uh, smaller political parties. They are absolutely elated. And again, this for me, like the Lekwa municipality in Pumalanga, um, it, it, it's very, very telling mm -hmm. of, of uh, people realizing that we need to elect people that know our issues, that know our problems. We spoke about Cedarburg. That for me is also fascinating. The DA dropping from the majority party to the third biggest party because of a very local party there as well. A bunch of tea farmers from the Cedarburg. So, so just to confirm, Maluti Apofong, Harry Smith, Putati Jaba, Kwakwa in the eastern of Free State yes. is very likely to have a new coalition government led by MAP-16, a party that no, no, none of us has heard of before this election. Councillors, ex-ANC councillors who blew the whistle on corruption, who started their own party. This is democracy in action, guys. This mm. is something to celebrate. I think so, and I think that uh, you're going to see a lot of a lot more of it. Um, uh, some some offshoots of, of um, the the ANC, but you also see uh, some uh, independent candidates that come from the from the Democratic Alliance in other areas. So I'm I'm very fascinated. We saw this also in the Western Cape. In the Western Cape, a lot. Ikosa is leading a municipality, um, uh, and and I think that 
uh, what, what governs these, I was speaking to our colleague Jan Gerba, who said, and he says, you, you're not finding much about uh, these, these local parties' ideology. And I said mm. to him, there's no ideology. <coughs> the, the, what brings them together is, is just the issues of the municipality. Mm. I don't know if I could go as far as saying that this is the start of the depoliticization of local government, but I think we're sort of heading towards that. It might be because the start of the democratization of, <laughs> of, of politics, because you know. We saw in all the metros, almost all of them, a uh, bar here in their Buffalo City, the ANC grew slightly. Um, the DA, I don't think, grew anywhere, if mm -mm. I remember well. No. But we saw the ANC and the DA lose support in all the metros and across many municipalities in South Africa. What does that tell us about the state of our voters? Um, the state, that, the fact that our voters, our electorate, are saying no. We not, we don't believe that we have to vote for either of the two big parties. We are going to entrust smaller parties, the likes of the Freedom Front Plus, the likes of Action SA, the likes of the IFP in mm. KZN, and super local parties like the Cedarburg uh, uh, Tea Farmers, uh, Map 16 in Maluti Upper Form, and a plethora of others in the in in Klebecha, the Northern Areas Party, um, uh, etc. What does it tell us about the state of our voters, our electorate? What are they looking for? Are they shopping around? Are they just desperately hoping that someone else will do a better job? You know, ahead of this election, uh, one of the feelings that I got anecdotally from you know speaking to people was was a kind of frustration with the political system, and and the fact that change was glacial. It happened so very uh, slowly. You had these two dominant parties. You know, the one party much bigger than the other one, but they were basically the only two real options if you wanted uh, to vote for someone. Uh, uh, moving towards the political center, you've obviously you obviously have the EFF on the on the on the outers of of the political spectrum. But I think people were looking for something different. And it's interesting when you when you look at the numbers in Gauteng, where wherever the DA dropped ten, the ANC dropped ten. When the ANC dropped tw twelve, the DA drops eleven. So there was the, you know you could you could literally uh, look at the building blocks as they were formed to help build other parties. You know, uh, in Soweto, if uh, the DA when the where the DA lost. Um, six percentage points of black voters in a certain vo polling station, it en masse went to Action SA. If the ANC lost 15 percentage points in a, at a voting station in Soweto, that went to Action SA. So there was a very clear pattern that you can identify looking at the metros in Tuane, Joburg and elsewhere, um, where the support ebbed away from the big parties yes. to the smaller ones. So I think the message from the electorate, if you combine the message from the electorate where they gave smaller parties increased support, um, and stayed away was that there is a frustration with the status quo, um, and that they are looking for, for for new options. And it was it was it 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 it, um, it came out in the support that was given to parties like Action SA. Benita, isn't there a risk here of the politics of fear and identity? And I'll explain why. Mm -hmm. Of course, in a city like Johannesburg, what you've seen is that uh, traditionally coloured communities uh, like like uh, Easterus, um, uh, south of Joburg went for a so-called colored party in the Patriotic Alliance, a party that looks like them, that is active in the area, that understands their issues. Um, if you look at Nelson Mandela Bay, a party uh, uh, like the Northern Party, the same uh, theme. You also have, I, it escapes me the name now, but another party in Nelson Mandela Bay, which is very specifically from a township there, black people in that township, their issues representing them. You know, isn't there also a danger that we are moving back to these politics of identity and fear that, you know, we only trust someone who looks like us, who's from our community, because and the others don't care? And you've seen a little bit with the rise of the Freedom Prime Plus too, right? Um, I think that's all, that they are beneficiaries yes, of that. Yes, yes, absolutely. I don't, think we are, I don't think it's entirely that. I think it also has to do with targeted localization of campaigns mm. and what patriotic alliances. We will, we will put our energy here because we can win mm. here. And I think that was very smart. And we're from here. And we're from here. Um, I think I think the Freedom Front Plus also did the same thing. It was a very um, a strategic uh, uh, campaign. To, uh, and I mean, we spoke to, to Peter Grunewald yesterday, and he was saying that um, you know they benefited from people leaving the DA because they were confused what the DA um, uh, message was, and coming sort of almost back to the Freedom Front Plus. Um, they've doubled the number of, of, of uh, or more than doubled the number of. of of council, uh, councillors uh, that they have and PR councillors. Um, the, the interesting thing for me is that the issue of like 
identity politics and stuff would be true if we saw a massive increase in the EFF support. Mm. We didn't really see it. Mm. And action is a kind of uh, uh, throws a water on that and, yes. the, and, and these third wheel part, the, the yeah. third tier parties. Because now it's really about you know the pipes and the and the and the and yes. the street lights. And action is they managed to break through into the townships of Johannesburg as well into the suburbs. So Mashaba mm. can yes. factually mm. say that mm. we are a truly non-racial party. Mm. We've, mm. The results show that, and yeah. that we achieved what neither the ANC mm. nor the DA could do mm. in a city like Joburg. But also, what I find interesting, and I and I think we're going to see a lot more of this, is that we're going to see very uh, geographically targeted parties. Good moving, moving forward. What value do you have as the IFP to put up candidates in the Western Cape? It serves no interest. Mm. Stick to your area, focus on that area. Um, and, 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 and I think Mashaba was a good example of that. And I think the EFF um, was the antithesis of that. And, and they're paying the price for it. So focus on the areas that you already um, have a, a foothold and then build on that. The, the, the Freedom Front Plus was an interesting uh, case study hmm. because um, they usually um, build their campaigns on a on a kind of exclusionary white Afrikaans nationalist message. There was a change of tone this time around. You know, for the first time, you saw uh, posters in English, um, not focusing on not focusing on ideas. yeah, but, <laughs> but 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 not focusing on issues of Afrikaans culture like um, you know your culture is under attack, but focusing on service delivery. So the message was, you know, it's about service delivery. It's about local service delivery. Um, you know, they fielded black candidates. They fielded coloured candidates. You know, they fielded English-speaking candidates. So 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 that seems to have worked. And if you look at um, some of the wards in in Pretoria that have that were traditional strong DA voting wards for 20 years you know that the Freedom Front Plus went from 4 to 14 percent 5 to 20 percent you know so there's been significant growth um, and I think a lot of that was fueled by people saying you know we see the ANC we see the DA they're not delivering for us we're frustrated we'll pretty much give anyone a go if they take the time to listen to us yeah. and if they're focused on local issues um, and the Freedom Front Plus was a party that seems to have gotten that tonality right in certain instances you know what's very important Abby, to, to mention is that these parties that the smaller parties that have done well it is very important for them to continue uh, the momentum after the elections because it affects the next election because you you, you see it, you saw cope at third place and then drop down mm. you see and so what happens is people are looking for the third option people are looking away from even politics and so you have to um, if you are uh, um, uh, you know the uh, the you I'm trying to think of a party that's fourth or fifth besides if you're the IFP you're going to have to make you're going to have to make it work for you so mm. that you can continue and then the other thing is we, we haven't spoken about opposition being in opposition is a very important Absolutely. thing the, the DA got it right yeah. the problem with the DA is that while they got opposition right they were fumbling with uh, uh, governing. In, with governing um, and yes the statement that say the DA governs better is true but you can govern better when you have a little bit you know when you have a smaller team it's easier to do now when you you know you when you're all over the place it, it becomes very difficult and also when you're having an identity crisis it becomes very difficult mm. um to 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 say who you really are Gwenita, i must ask you and peter in the last five minutes we have of this year's election chats on ballot box coalitions what are you hearing are you putting picking up anything tangible around whether the da and the ANC are maybe talking are you picking anything up around the Shaba and the DA, what are you hearing? Okay, so the first thing is, um, I think whoever made public exclusionary statements, that's going to be no, go to no. I think people like Mashaba will have to end up not going with, but at least having a conversation mm. with the ANC. the ANC. I think the EFF will have to have conversations with people that they said they're not going to have uh, 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 conversations with. I think that it is a free for all. I think. <laughs> The biggest dynamic that you're going to see is that national leadership agreements are going to be hard to operationalize with local personality uh, dynamics. Uh, and that's going to be the real test. So what we mean by that is Cyril Ramaphosa, Helen Zilla, or let's, let's use the real leader, John Steenhuisen of the DA, can sit around the table, thrash out a beautiful constitution first, rule of law, service delivery, 
uh, deal, yeah. but their local councillors, their colleagues in Joburg, yeah. Etwane and Ekuleni might not like that deal and might not like their colleagues so much to want to implement that deal. Absolutely. And then it becomes a personality thing. Herman Mishaba and Paul Palazzi, they have to work with each other. Or Loisa Masuku and actually, um, Herman Mishaba. No, that's not going to You understand? So we cannot discount the role of narcissism ego and 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 and, and uh, you know hunger for positions in these talks that's fortunately not unique to our country's politics peter can you feasibly see the anc and the da coming to some co some uh, kind of agreement that would not be too much of a risk for either party on the road to 2024 i can't but you can adrian no 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 look um uh, you made a very eloquent argument uh, and and I, and I get that you know a, a super coalition uh, in a city like johannesburg or pretoria between the da and the anc um, can work to both uh, both of those parties advantage uh, it would mean the anc uh, would be able to remain in power which would obviously be important for them and their supporters um, but it would also give the da an opportunity to govern um, and to try and bring stability to two city governments that have over the last five years been subjected to to regular disruptions because of coalitions that that have failed it could however be the kiss of death for both of those parties because you vote DA in opposition to the ANC and DA voters might say but now you're giving uh, uh, willingly and knowingly giving the, D the ANC another opportunity to govern and we know what they've done so it might work obviously to John Stiernes and the DA's detriment should they go that route um, for the ANC I think uh, it might be a little bit easier because they are the party of government and they can tell their supporters look we've struck a deal with our known devil but at least we remain in government and from the per that we've got in government you can do a hell of a lot uh, either damage or good uh, I just want to make one point and and add that we're going to need a lot of political maturity from political leaders they're going to have to put their egos aside the interests of their parties um, to the side as well um, and to start governing in, in in service of people who across this country uh, including in the city of Johannesburg where where we both stay Juanita have been suffering under poor poor service delivery um, so that needs to happen and let's hope that they can do it we haven't really seen political maturity from our leaders the last couple of years maybe they can surprise us Kunita, it is still feasible I've, I've run the numbers again and, and I listened to Malema as well um, before we came on air and um, am I correct that he said he's not going to ask for positions yeah he will uh, come with a list of demands or deals that he wants to make agreements around toilets service delivery water disabled yeah. caring for the disabled and the elderly uh, I think you also threw in land there. If so I'm let's talk about yes. land. Uh, our colleague Zinke uh, Lati is in the press conference now. She just sends an update to say that they said Cyril is going to have to vote with us on land expropriation without compensation there we go. before we talk about metro. Shots fired. Before we talk about? Metro. Metros. Okay, so the EFF has, 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 put, it has put a line. Okay, yeah. uh, We know what Ramaphosa and the NC has done in Parliament, stretching out that Section 25 debate over two years and watering it down yeah. to a point where the EFF and the ANC no longer agree. Yeah. So that may be a sticking point. But of course, you know, negotiations will go on into deep into many nights and that is the hard position, but it may come down. Yeah. It is feasible for the ANC um, and, and probably a bit easier even if the if it doesn't want any positions yeah. to just govern with them in Johannesburg, Tswane, Etiquini and where, Ekerileni. Is that where they, they only need the EFF? No, they no. need a, a few smaller yeah. parties, but I mean, the, on Tswane, I've, I've got here, Peter, about 46% without smaller parties. In Joburg, they'll end up on, on 38, so that's a bit more of a push, but they're going to have to make some deals with the PA, etc., which is which is possible. I mean, at, in the moment in Johannesburg, the ANC is governing with the help of the IFP and a few others. Mm. I think so. I think that I mean, especially I'm interested in like Etiquini. They need. I don't. I don't see um, an uh, uh, EFFDA marriage in Etiquini. I see uh, ANC EFF marriage. They're closer there, um, and also with with the sort of RDT. This is our conference and resolution sort of narrative in the ANC. It's easier to make those concessions. Yes, we'll you know we'll assert uh, land, and then hopefully um, by the time you actually have to make a decision, this coalition marriage is already <laughs> you yes, know done. Yes. So that that's going to be quite interesting to watch. Um, I think that the demands that are going to be made on both parties, the ANC and the Democratic Alliance, are going to throttle them a little bit. I don't think 
they have the leverage or the luxury of throwing around their weight as yep. majority parties because they say we are the leader of this coalition and small parties have now learned mm. that well at your own pace. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I think just my own two cents. Uh, I think that 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 is probably one of the big themes out of this party is that the elite parties are no longer in charge on their own. They are just parties now and they have to make deals they have to listen and they have to talk about service delivery we are again talking about land which is not a local government issue here mm. you know and that is why these smaller parties are coming because they talk to the issues of bread and butter in local governments Juanita thank you so much for joining us Peter thank you for joining us and thank you to the News 24 viewers and readers for spending the past four days with us here at The Rock in Tswane Please stay tuned to News24 because we still have lots of news to come. We have to follow those coalition deals. We will be covering them wherever they happen in dark corners with smoke or without smoke. We will be there. We will be telling you who's going to govern your cities and towns over the next few weeks. Thank you for joining us and stay, stay well. Bye-bye.